Hello dear students. In this video lesson, we are having a talk on Walter D. La Mayer's novel Three Royal Monkeys. Walter D. La Mayer was an English poet, short story writer and novelist. He was born on 25th April 1873 and died on 22nd June 1956. He is probably best remembered for his works for children, for his poem The Listeners, and for a highly acclaimed selection of subtle psychological horror stories. His best psychological horror stories include Seaton's Aunt and All Hallows. In 1921, his novel Memories of a Midget won the James Tate Black Memorial Prize for Fiction and his post-war collected stories for children won 1947 Carnegie Medal for British Children's Books. Now about the novels of De La Mayo. De La Mayo published only five novels. His fiction is metaphorical and resembles his poetry in its concerns. Walter De La Mayo's novels are diverse in structure although unified by his recurring themes. His novel, Henry Broken, is episodic, with its protagonist moving from one encounter to another. The Return is another novel which has all the trappings of the Gothic with mysterious strangers, supernatural events and unexplained happenings. The Three Mulla Murgers which was later renamed as The Three Royal Monkeys, is a children's story with a direct narrative and a clear objective toward which the novel's actions are directed. Memoirs of a Midget is Victorian in structure and is filled with incidents and coincidences. It emphasizes character over the other aspects of novel writing. At first sight, a novel is really a long short story, what some might call a novella. Its plot is simple, the problem its protagonist faces is straightforward and it has only the barest attempt at a subplot. Now uh, into the novel Three Royal Monkeys. The first title of this novel was Three Mulla Mulgars which was later renamed as Three Royal Monkeys. Three Royal Monkeys is one of the most unusual striking books in its imaginative, symbolic and numinous depth. The novel has been praised by the literary historian Julia Briggs as a neglected masterpiece and by the critic Brian Stableford as a classic animal fantasy. Richard Adams said it was his favorite novel. Through the nature of its story, its characters, its language, and the encounters that the characters have with multiple layers of human experience, it is an imaginative feat on the part of the author Walter de la Mayo. This short fiction is Walter de la Mayo's only full-length book for children. Published in 1910, its original title the Three Mulla Murgers was presumably so unhelpfully baffling even by early 20th century standards. So it was later renamed as Three Royal Monkeys, a kind of uh, explanatory title. It is in effect an odyssey for children, telling the story of how three monkey brothers undertake a long and arduous voyage, encompassing multiple adventures and encounters with diverse, deep and mysterious aspects of life in order to arrive at a paradise-like land from which their late father originated. The richness, vividness, the eco-spiritual aspects and the numinousness of the story are conveyed not only by its content but by its partially invented language. That is, the English is liberally sprinkled with names and words in the language that the monkeys themselves speak so that it conveys the sense of being inside of a mysterious faraway magical animal world that is at the same time human in its resonance. 
and it is this human resonance of the text that makes the readers identify themselves in the place of the monkeys and the consciousness of the spiritual connectedness of the monkeys to their physical world reminds the modern man of his spiritual displacement or how much he has lost connection with the world, the nature or the planet. Reading the book is an archetypal experience. It brings back into the consciousness of the reader all those experiences that lay buried in the collective unconscious of the homo sapiens. Dila Mayer has given the three young Mullah Murgars emotions and thoughts that are human enough to be recognizable but animal enough to be alien and even uncanny. The lines between man and monkey are blurrier in Dila Mayer. One might expect them to be. Uh, monkeys and apes are the closest to us anyway. Monkeys can love and hate and envy as no rabbit or mole ever did. The narrative of this fable of brotherhood and friendship is full of humor, excitement and poetic qualities that it will captivate readers of all ages. The story is rich with the exotic beauty that is often tinged with melancholy and this melancholy is occasionally relieved by the light touches of comedy. Now a gist of the story. A trio of royal monkey brothers, Thimple, Thumper and Nod, receive a magical amulet, a wonder stone, from their mother who instructs them to set out in search of their father. So it is the mother who instructs these three monkey brothers to set out in search of their father. The mother of these three is an ordinary grey fruit monkey named Mutta Matuta. She is accustomed to scrambling about on all fours. But their father, Seelam, is a Mullah Mulgar, means a royal monkey. He had come to their forest late in life, worn and racked by years of wandering. But he had come walking upright as men walk, wearing a red jacket carrying the wonder stone. He was followed by his servant also. Long ago he had set out from the court of his brother Asasiman, the prince of the valleys of Tishna, to see the world. Mutta Matuta, the young fruit monkey, nursed this proud wanderer back to health and for 13 years Selim stayed with her as her husband. To the three sons that were born to them, he taught things that very few monkeys know. Means how to make fire, how to count, how to take honey from bees without being stung. But above all, he taught them to walk upright, never to taste blood and never unless in danger or despair to climb trees. A royal monkey never do these things. That's why he taught his sons also uh, to be like that. In the 14th year, a longing came to the old prince to see again the valleys of Tishna. He promised to return if successful and take his family there, but no word ever came. Seasons passed. The mother sickened and died. That same year snow fell in the forest for the first time in memory. And after Nod had accidentally burnt the hut in which they were living, the sons decided to set out on their father's tracks. With the amulet or the wonder stone to protect them, the brothers set off on a series of adventures that unfold across a fantasy vision of Africa. So this is how the story, the novel, opens. On the borders of the forest of Munza Marga lived once an old grapefruit monkey of the name of Mutta Matuta. She had three sons, the eldest Thuma, the next Thimbula, and the youngest who was a Nizanila Humanota. And they called each other for the short Thumb, Thimbul and Nod. The rickety temple down old wooden hut in which they lived had been built 319 Munza years before by a traveler 
a Portugal or Portingal lost in the forest 22,997 leagues from home. Nizanila here refers to someone who is able to work magic or having magical powers. Here the novelist provides a specific city of numbers. He provides specific numbers here. A major part of the book details the brother's difficult and magical journey. Delamere is unusual in treating the monkeys perfectly as serious characters. Not the youngest is a Nizanila and has magic in him. And he is the possessor of the marvelous Wonderstone which if rubbed when they are in great danger will bring the aid of Tishna to them. His two elder brothers regard him with a mixture of love, impatience and awe. In some way, it's a classic quest story. It's a story of spiritual quest and eco-spirituality, carefully following the traditions of uh, the youngest son as hero and uh, test by ordeal like that. But it is both wilder and stranger than most quest stories and it is far richer in language. There are many mysteries in this book and Tishnar is one of them with a whole chapter at the end dedicated to her. She is the beautiful one of the mountains, wind and stars, the sea and endless unknown. She is who instills in the heart a sense of longing. She brings peace and dreams and maybe in her shadow form death. The character of Nod itself is mysterious. The brother's journey is precipitated when Nod accidentally sets fire to the hut. In the fairy tale tradition of the foolish yet wise younger brother, Nod makes many mistakes and these mistakes drive the story forward through eventful adventures. Nod is also the one who saves his brothers from the many predicaments they find themselves in as they trek through the deep moonlit snow of the winter forest, escaping the flesh-eating minimals, tricking the terrifying hunting cat Imanala, riding striped zebras, the little horses of Tishna, finding friends and losing one another, quarreling and making up, etc. The uniqueness of the story is its setting. It is a long journey indeed from the forest to the valleys of Tishna. And D. Lameyer has richly imagined every inch of it. The three brothers encounter many other monkey cultures. For a time, they are prisoners of the minimals, uh, the flesh-eating monkeys, who live underground. They are helped in one of the most splendid parts of the book by a, a rather forlorn tribe of mountain monkeys. Mountain monkeys are the mountaineers who use their own bodies as climbing equipment. They get up and down cliffs by forming ladders, each lower monkey holding uh, by the hands to the feet of the monkey above. The lightest monkey at the bottom, about 20 is their limit and roughly that many of themselves call a rope. Not even encounters a man, a shipwrecked sailor named Andy Battle, with whom he lives for a time. Half as a pet and half as a companion. There are fierce baboons and river monkeys who fish with their tails. All of these, except Andy Battle, are like the royal brothers themselves. Something more than animal and something less than human. They are not parodies of us and not even quite distortions but eerie reflections. And one of the eerest aspects is the utter absence of morality. Of course, these monkeys judge particular things to be good or bad. It is good to have plenty of uka nuts and bad to be eaten by the minimals. It is good to be able to make a fire in the snow, or bad to lose the wonderstone as Nod twice does. But there is no law of the jungle as such as uh, uh, Kipling imagined in Jungle Book and no eternal struggle between good and evil as in the Lord of the Rings. Things just happen, sometimes with rhyme, never with a reason. Perhaps 
that is a little like childhood itself as i have already mentioned uh, the novel is generally considered as a children's novel it's a deeply spiritual quest an epic journey with no hint of tongue in cheek delamayor explores the transcendence of beauty the pregnancy of loss the imminence of death and his characters blaze all the more brightly in their course across the impermanent world not although physically the weakest of the three monkeys is spiritually gifted he can contact the supernatural world in his dreams and is able to use the wonder stone a talisman imanala is essentially a spiritual force it can strike anywhere and can take any form it can make dreams in which the ethos of dila mayo are always akin to death death is referred as the third sleep in the book The quest for the valley of Tishna is a search for meaning in the Mulla Mulgar's lives. Their use of dreams, a talisman, and their conflict with Imanala make the quest spiritual as well as adventurous. Nod's encounter with the water maiden is a kind of spiritual experience for him. Nod loses his heart to the beautiful water maiden. Water maiden is uh, the word for water maiden. to whom he entrusts his wonder stone now before reaching into the conclusion of this session i would like to mention a bit about the language used by dila mayo in this novel dila mayo had a happy yearful language he has invented a really fine monkey language for this novel some of it is quite independent of human speech the word for monkey itself is mulgar A Munza Mulga is a forest monkey and a Mulla Mulga is of course a royal one. A man is an Oomkar. Mirmet is a literal shadow or ghost or even the pictured remembrance of anything in the mind. Some of the words in the monkey language are human words made strange. Dilameo made some alterations to the human words to make them appear strange. Eflandos are elephants. Zebras are zebras and water maiden in monkey language is water maiden in English. So that's the end of this session. Thank you.